Who would have thought that some of the dopest knives in the world were made in this man's garage? Let's check them out. We're in Ashland, Oregon, on the way over to Dave Rybon's shop, Kingdom Armory. He's making a limited edition knife from one of my favorite companies, Mission Workshop. You've probably seen me rocking their pants and their bags. I just love this company. So if they're making a knife, I want to see what they're doing. What's the process for you when you create a knife? You know, where do you start? How do you make these material selections? Can you just walk me through that? For me, this is all artistic process. Like I get an idea instead of sitting down and spending a lot of time like designing in CAD, I just jump into like three-dimensional materials and prototyping, like it just comes out. Some of it's so organic flow, like so I'll just grab stick of steel with a sharpie, mark it out, cut it, band saw it, grind it to the shape I want, do mm -hmm. the same thing with a mating or matching titanium frame and get something that's a functional prototype. And a lot of times there isn't really just that actually ends up becoming a full-blown custom knife. So why the this particular curvature? With any curved knife, your actual linear cutting edge, as you know, as you go around an arc, you're eating up more real estate, right? So you can pack more cutting edge in a curved design as you can with a straight edge. What kind of steel is this? That particular one is S35VN, which is a crucible steel, which is like sintered, you know, okay. sintered steel. Yeah, so it's powderized and then reformed and pressed under heat and pressure to make. So all at a molecular standpoint, it's all like fine grain, grinds up super smooth. Yep. And then there's not any voids or weak points in it. Unlike forging, where bulk material is heated, beaten, and quenched to create the metallurgy for a balance of strength and toughness, modern engineering has given us the ability to create powders with very specific chemistries. Dave is using CPM-154, which is a mix of iron, carbon, chromium, and molybdenum. The combination provides both a strong and tough material that won't break and can hold a sharp edge. Once the powder with the right chemistry is created, it can be heated at a temperature lower than that of the melting temperature, but high enough for the atoms to gain enough mobility for the particulates to start to join together. Essentially, smaller particles become larger ones, known as grains. Within the grains are single crystals of materials that are really hard. These grains are separated by grain boundaries. Grain boundaries are really good at diffusing energy and thus stop crack propagation through a material. So basically, inside the grain is hard and the grain boundaries make it tough. So by very carefully controlling the time, temperature, and pressure the powder is sintered at, materials engineers can control how strong and hard the material will be. Another upside of this material is that there are no voids or air pockets, often caused by foraging, which can make it weaker. It seemed like you would have to have a very like specialty yeah. fabrication facility. Sure. Kind of walking in here, this is like dude's garage yeah. with shop in it, yeah. and you're making world-class knives. I could like have a hundred thousand dollar CNC machine over here and this over here, but at some point then I become, that machine owns me. And I gotta hit quantity, I gotta hit product, I gotta do so much to make that machine pay for itself. Now that machine can afford me to do a whole bunch of amazing things, but I don't wanna be a slave to any piece of equipment. Every piece of equipment I have is like as lean as trim as it can be, just when I need to get it done and I own it outright. This means that Dave, working out of his garage, can create knives that are not only beautiful, but as high-tech as any on the planet. The part of this story that really gets me, though, was that Dave, at one point, was going through some hard times, hated his job, needed a change. He always loved knives, so much so that he had a huge knife collection. One day, when he hit rock bottom, he decided that he's just gonna do what he loves. And he sold his knife collection and bought all the tools he needed to make knives. Now, he opens up his books on January 1st, starts taking orders, and in two hours, he's booked out for the entire year, doing what he loves from his garage, supporting his family. Empowerment and a happy life through making, I love it.